Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and today we're going to be talking about how to reliably and consistently get a religion on deity difficulty. I, uh, I saw a few people talking about the difficulty of getting a religion on deity and I figured it would be a good video to help inform people on how to pull it off. Originally I was going to run through three example games but the footage for that was going to run upwards of an hour. Each quick religion game taking about 20 minutes or so and you know in the end I decided in order to be respectful for your time as a viewer, I would put this heavily edited front section of the video and then follow up with an example game. The build order is super, super basic. There are a few considerations to start with. In order to pull this off, you basically need your first tile that you work in your capital to be at least two food and one production. Two food, two production is the ideal situation, but any less than two food and you will not be able to pull this off because your city won't grow to two population quickly enough to produce the required settler. The very first thing you're going to do is get yourself a slinger and then start researching holy sites. You'll notice that your city should grow roughly in the exact amount of time it takes to get a slinger. Once the slinger is completed, you're going to immediately build a settler in your capital. If the tile gods have aligned, the settler will finish within one to two turns of you researching holy sites and after that you're going to build a holy site in your capital city. With the settler that you build, you're going to want to look for a good place to settle and immediately start building a holy site there as well so that you can start generating more faith and great profit point while securing more land. In the example behind me I was being a bit greedy because I had a really good start so I kind of built a builder first and then bought the copper tile later on uh, to build a much better holy site. Once the holy site is completed in your capital you're going to want to assess the current great profit standings and make sure to check how many religions have been formed and how many players are earning great profit points. If the AI is not competing very hard for a religion you can safely pick up a shrine and then continue on into settlers and military units. Usually I would only do this if there's only only one religion already taken typically that's from a AI player building Stonehenge and there's only two other saves generating great profit points the safest version of the follow-up is that the second your holy site is finished you have to immediately start working holy site projects in your capital city you're gonna need two to three holy site projects to secure a religion depending on various factors sometimes it can go up as high as five but typically I only need two to three in order to secure it in my games and that's it. That's basically the whole build order. This is how I get a religion whenever I'm going for one. It's extremely reliable and extremely consistent. However, it does come at a great cost. You're pretty much going to be behind in every category you can think of. You're going to be extremely behind in terms of your normal settler production. You're going to be extremely behind in terms of your military and your tech and your civics and everything. So you're going to have to consider carefully if a religion feeds into your game plan. This strategy is completely civilization agnostic and is designed specifically to be done by civilizations without any bonuses to religion in order to secure them a religion. If you are playing a civilization with bonuses to religion, you can modulate the strategy accordingly. For example, Japan and Russia build holy sites faster so they can more reliably go for shrines as their follow up and not have to immediately jump into work on holy site projects. If your civilization has bonuses to faith generation, you can purchase your great profit in a pinch using the faith if you really need to secure it. Typically this only happens if the AI is competing really hard for a religion. I would only suggest doing this if you are going for a religion victory or if you're going for a culture victory because having a religion is very powerful for a culture victory because you can use your faith generation to purchase a lot of key great people and secure a lot of extra tourism when you're going for a culture victory and faith is basically the only yield you care about in a religion game anyway there is one other really niche situation in which i would recommend this strategy it's a really advanced and complicated strategy that involves a lot of timing things very carefully where you go for an early religion and then use the religion dedication bonus in the classical age to earn era score by spreading your religion with missionaries alongside the ancestral hall to mass produce and build settlers in the medieval era with a monumentality golden age but it is really tough to do and honestly it's really hard to describe and it probably deserves its own whole complete video describing the various things that you need to pull off in order to get it to work i think i've pulled this off a few times in the past but i can't remember which games off the top of my head so there'll probably be a comment somewhere where someone remembers below so keep an eye out for that if you want to see me do it if you find yourself in a situation where you have no tiles to place a holy site due to forest get a builder before before you build a holy site and research mining and then chop the forest to catch up. If you find yourself in jungle and nowhere to place the holy site, I'm sorry, you're just shit out of luck. <laughs> There's not much you can do. Um, you just have to like re-roll or adjust your strategy or just go for it anyway and hope. What's going to follow is going to be a fully commented example game that I made before I made this section. So I'm probably going to go over some of the same details. I'm going to be talking about all the same sorts of stuff that I've already talked about. 
that game should give you a full overview of how the strategy works and give you a few examples of things to do when certain situations arise while you're trying to pull it off. Anyway, good luck and I hope you enjoy the full example. Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to my video on how to get a religion on DD nearly 100% of the time. I probably clickbaited you with like get a religion 100% of the time on DD. Uh, you know, you're going to have to forgive me for that. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run through a few, a few examples of how I get my religions on DD uh, with near 100% reliability. To start with, the very first thing you're going to want to do is to uh, try to identify a good place to settle. And in addition to finding a good place to settle, you're going to want to try to identify a good place to put a holy site. Now, unfortunately, in this starting location, we don't have an exactly like a really, really good holy site location. There's no mountains around. There's no natural wonder. There's nothing like that that we can use in our immediately start immediate starting location. Uh, we are playing on Didi, and I decided to pick Victoria with random sieves so that I could just restart the game and go through a whole bunch of um, permutations of how to get a religion. So really quick here, I'm going to scout this hill. And uh, right over here with the um, with the settler, we've got a few choices with regards to where exactly we want to settle. So we could settle in place that would open up a hill tile. We could potentially move off of the river to somewhere else. Now, I could also move down here onto the... Um, onto the floodplains to get access to this two food, two production tile a little bit earlier. Um, and I think that's not a bad move. I could also move in the direction of this wheat over here and take advantage of that. But I think in the interest of securing a fairly weak start and showing that even with a really, really weak start, you can actually get a religion anyway, uh, I'm gonna actually move towards this wheat onto a weaker tile. And this will also open up the possibility, say, if I was playing this game for real, to settle another city over here on the T, uh, or, or beside the T, rather. So we're going to settle right here. And this is pretty much the second worst case scenario you could ask for when going for a religion. And that is only having uh, two tiles with two food on them, because it's very important you get your first uh, pop out. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So uh, the only way that this could be worse if is if none of the tiles around our capital had two food. Um, you really do need a two food tile to make this sort of more reliable because your build order is going to be Slinger, Settler, Holy Site. So we're going to immediately start researching Astrology and we're going to immediately start building a Slinger and that's all we do. Let me go to the next turn. Now I'm interested in grabbing this um, tribal village, but I believe my slinger will be able to grab that for me. So I'm going to explore a little bit this way, just in case there might be a barb camp over here or something like that, that I can take advantage of. So we'll quickly play through these turns. I may even cut out some of this footage that isn't super important, although I'll probably just leave it all in because, uh, it, it, oh, this is a bit of a weird generation, but we were granted a scout, which is pretty handy. This is like pretty lucky. I don't really know if I should use it, but I think this is like pretty good to show you uh, some of the examples. My word, this continent. There's a boost for masonry. It doesn't really help us. It's a very strange continent. So let us go to this tile. And then we might pop up onto one of these hills. So again, worst case scenario is we have very weak tiles around our capital and we will still be able to get a religion. And I will show you why. Okay, we're going to pop over here. Our slinger is just about to finish. And we will start working on our settler. Now, if you are lucky and you get a little bit more production, the timing on this actually works out really well. If you start with a, if you can start on a plains hill or have a 2-2 two -two tile uh, that you can start working straight away, your uh, slinger, settler, and holy site will sync up really, really nicely in that the slinger will finish the turn that your city grows to two population and your settler will finish the turn that you get astrology. That's not going to happen this game just because um, we are getting science from this T tile, which is going to speed up how quickly we get astrology. But the, um, the strategy is designed to be as um, the word I'm looking for is uh, consistent. It's, it's very, 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 very consistent in a variety of situations and is very resistant 
to changes in your situation. Now, there is one really, really big weakness with going for this strategy of, of securing a religion on Didi. And that's that you don't build a whole lot of military for like the first 30 turns. And um, if you start really close to an AI, that can go really poorly for you. I have been killed numerous times doing this strategy. So it is a very high risk strategy and you should always be assessing how um, how far you can take it. Now we've been hit by the slinger as uh, spearmen, so we do have to kind of run away a little bit, but that's okay. We did find a city state. This is um, going to help us build our settler. That's a little bit quicker. If you see in here, we are now getting, well, I don't think it'll show until next turn, but it should. Um, it should show next turn. Oh, and we got a barb camp spawning behind us as we advanced. I'll hit you once and then heal for a turn. Got another tribal village there. At his best. This code of laws, we'll plug in this. We also want to plug in God King. Um, plugging in God King isn't super important. If you have a tile that you can place where you'll get a lot of faith from your holy site. Um, so that you can get your pantheon sooner. If you do have a good place to put your holy site, then go for urban planning. Since I don't, I'm going to get God King. Because I don't have a good place to put my holy site. To get extra faith, which I can use to get a pantheon. Um, we are going to take a moment just to heal for one turn on this guy. And it doesn't really matter what we research here. I'll just go for foreign trade. Okay, and the turn that you unlock your holy site, you're going to want to look and find the tile that gives you the most faith. Even a plus one is worth it. I'm going to use this desert tile over here. I'm going to buy the tile. I'm going to place the holy site, but I'm going to continue to work on the settler. Um, so your major goals in the early game are to identify a good tile to place your holy site. You're trying to identify threats and risks. Um, now, after you get Astrology, your secondary tech can be really, really sort of situational. If you... Usually, I would recommend going Animal Husbandry so that you're a little bit closer to Archery and a little bit safer. Um, but Mining is a perfectly valid thing to go for as well because you can do a little bit of chopping and all that sort of stuff if you find a builder in a uh, tribal village. So personally here, I'm feeling very safe, but I'm going to go ahead and pick up Animal Husbandry for the chance that I can maybe find horses, which would... Um, there's a good chance of horses maybe spawning in and around here, which would improve the quality of my tiles around my capital. There's a boost there. And we will take the uh, hill promotion. Like we have found another player, so they're a little bit far away to, to where I don't feel threatened by them. The one thing you have to keep in mind, you're building this settler and a lot of the time you're going to be sending it out naked and unprotected. So you have to be very, very careful with it. We did meet France. I would almost always recommend sending a delegation to the AI the first turn that you meet them. And then checking how many cities they have. Right now they have three. You can never trade for their capital city. So it's always however many cities they have here. Plus one. You can also check that with UI mods and stuff like that. Like there's plenty of ways to check it. But um, this is like a quick way I check in the early game. While I'm doing my trading. So I don't have to go to a different section of the UI. Right. I clicked the wrong thing there. But that, this isn't super consequential. Um, we have secured a slinger. So now that our settler is almost done, we want to try to identify a good spot to settle our city. And there's a lot of considerations that you want to make here. Um, one of them is the um, how good is the holy site in your second city going to be? Uh, how defensible is the city going to be? And can you secure land for your empire with your second city? Those are going to be your three main considerations as you move your um, settler around. And I'm identifying a lot of mountains over here, so I'm kind of, that's why I'm moving my scout back this way. Plus one population, not exactly super amazing, but it does potentially help me out. And I'm identifying mountains over here, as well as this is the direction of France. So if I settle over here, I will have secured some land for me, and it'll be easier for me to settle in back through here. You also might want to look for luxuries that you could settle on top of, particularly faith generating luxuries, so that you can get your religion going. 
I don't feel super threatened right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick up mining. And now this settler, we've identified a really important area for me to secure over here because there's lots of mountains that I'll be able to use for my religion. Um, this is a strategy that I would only recommend going for on a religion or cultural game because on both of those types of games, faith can be really, really useful. Now, you can do it in a normal game. Now that the settler is finished, we're going to immediately work on a holy site. Uh, and you can see people are already starting to generate great profits. And in fact, probably Stonehenge has been built. No, but it should be built soon. You're very rarely are you ever going to get Stonehenge on deity difficulty. So I would almost basically never recommend getting it. And we're picking up um, mining, by the way, for the curious, is so that if there's a tile that we really want to put our holy site on that's occupied by a forest, uh, we can chop it down. Sometimes you're going to get into a situation in the early game where you can't place a holy site at all just because your whole area is filled with forests. Grab another slinger and then just pick up mining and then place your holy site. You should be fine. You might have to invest a little bit more into your um, stuff here. Okay, so we're kind of scouting in a radial direction. I feel like I've identified a really, really powerful um, holy site right there. So I'm thinking of settling right here on this tile. And then putting a holy site there. This will also act as a sort of uh, loyalty barrier. Which will, by placing the city here, I secure land sort of perpendicular to the city a little bit. Meaning the AI can settle towards it, but they'll have to settle successively. Because I'm putting loyalty pressure on those tiles. Maybe not enough loyalty pressure, but it should be enough to help out. We've also met Sumeri uh, Norway, sorry. He has the Sumerian colors, sent him a delegation. See if he has any deals. He has three cities as well. Who deserves more credit than okay, there is a bit of negative loyalty pressure there, but that's okay. That should be... We should be able to overcome that. Minus two is very, very fine because we're right on the edge of the loyalty pressure that they can put on us. So I'm still going to settle there because there's a really good holy site right there. Now... Um, you also want to run another assessment. Am I under threat? Am I going to be attacked? Then you can go for archery. Um, there's quite a few different directions to go. You go for bronze working. If you think iron is going to be important, then you're going to need iron to defend with swordsmen. Or if you think you need more mine tiles, all that sort of stuff. Uh, right here in this situation, I just like to pick up archery so that I have the option to get archers to defend myself. I'm also going to scout up this way. I'm going to come back and see if I can clear this barb camp. Step out of this guy's way. Uh, if you're playing multiplayer, never send your settlers unscouted, but I've got very good um, scouting information and the AI will never declare on you to kill your settlers, so that's fine. He has decided that standing right there in the way of my slinger is like the spot that he wants to stand, of course. Oh, and a horseman. Okay, that makes things a little bit more complicated. We're going to settle right here in place. We are going to immediately purchase the tile we want to put the holy site on, and we're going to immediately place the holy site. So, we have two holy sites in production. We have no great profit points. However, nobody has finished any religion stuff, okay? So we're going to pull this scout back because we need, we need the information in this area to see if France decides to go aggressive on us. We're going to want to be forewarned of that. And we're also going to luckily grab another... Um, barb camp. I'm also going to start moving my actual combat military units down in this direction to defend Bristol. And Scout here is again just going to stay in the area to see if any of these French military units start moving towards me and I'll need to defend myself. Your delegation is welcome. Don't quite have enough gold for a builder. Unfortunately, I didn't get any luxury settles. I would normally have maybe built a builder to be able to improve some of these tiles, particularly if I had like grassland hills, for example, um, or forests to chop. It can help you get this a little bit quicker and a little bit more consistently. But this is what I call the two city religion gambit, because if it backfires, you're basically dead. <laughs> you're basically super dead and super behind. Um, so once you reach the point of having two cities, 
and you have finished your holy site, what you have to do is make an assessment of the current status of the religion game. So if we see here, one religion is already gone and there's three religions left. Um, in a larger game, there might be less people going for a religion and earning less great profit points per turn. So we might have the time to stop off for a shrine. Unfortunately, in this game, religions are really, really competitive in the particular game settings that I have. So we're going to do the more aggressive and um, sort of risky version of the play where we go for holy site prayers. We're just going to run holy site prayers in our capital once or twice, always checking after uh, we do it to see what the status of things is. Also over here in Bristol, it's really important that we grow the population in here because the amount of population that's in the city is important for the loyalty. So we will lose a bit of production in favor of gaining a bit of food. Civic wise, again, not really super important what we go for. I like to just kind of like evenly work my way towards political philosophy. This is going to be heavily modulated by how you play your games. Okay, he's making fun of me because I have no boats. That's fine. Uh, if you see the little green happy face, always, always, always send a delegation and try to make a friendship with the AI. If you can make a friendship with the AI, that means I actually just don't care about Wilhelmina. She may as well not exist to me for the next 30 turns because she cannot declare war on me. And that is an incredibly powerful situation to find yourself in as a player. Now that my military units are in position to defend Bristol, I can continue to scout with my free scout that I got from that tribal village. Normally I wouldn't have a scout and I wouldn't have this much information. So I'm actually pretty fortunate here. And we now have enough faith to get our Pantheon. We... In a game where you are perceiving it to be extremely competitive to get a great profit, it is very, very, very often worth it to get Divine Spark. This will improve, this will basically double how quickly we get our great profits passively. Otherwise, you're going to want to go for a faith generating pantheon. Goddess of the Harvest is really good. Um, for example, Stone Circles is eh, kind of weak. Um, faith from Tundra, Faith from Desert, all that sort of stuff. Whatever the situation that holds for you, I would say Divine Spark is like a really good default choice that the AI almost never takes. So you're going to be pretty safe if you take that. We are having a little bit of a loyalty problem in Bristol, but that should be fixed when the population grows. Uh, maybe not, actually. I might have settled this a little bit too aggressively. Normally I don't make that kind of a mistake, but that's okay. Oh, we didn't actually meet these guys first. I thought I had met them first, so that was a small error on my part. Not a big deal, again. Just trying to give, give you the, the overall idea of how to get a religion first on deity. Or not, not get a religion first, but just secure a religion on deity. That's the goal here. We're just trying to make sure that we get a religion. It doesn't matter if we're first. It doesn't matter if we're last. Um, just I've noticed a lot of players have talked about how they struggle to get a religion on deity. And this is how you do it. All right, there's Early Empire. We are going to switch to Early Empire because there's a Governor title right there. Governor titles are really, really valuable. We have completed one instance of Holy Site Prayers. We're going to go check the rankings here. How many religions have gone? Still only one religion. We are now probably third in the running for a religion. We're going to work another Holy Site Prayer. And go here. Continue to explore. Although I would actually prefer to get state workforce for a very particular reason, which is the follow-up strategy to this that I'll talk about once we're there. And a bunch of city states, that's excellent. Do I have the money for a builder? Almost. I can buy a builder next turn. Okay, the holy site in Bristol is about to finish, which will be more great profit points. They're making four per turn. Okay, unit needs order. We built a holy site over here in Bristol. Now what we want to do in Bristol is we want to mm, shore up our weaknesses. So we can either go for a shrine um, if we need the faith generation. What we actually need right now, assessing my empire, is either settler or military, as far as I'm concerned. We need settlers or military units because we are in a rough spot. Alternatively, this city could also really, really use a monument because it's uh, lacking in loyalty. And it would also let it start claiming tiles. 
I think in this situation, um, getting a trader and trading with France would be a good move because it would secure us more gold and it would also improve our relations with France, which acts kind of like military in that it lowers her desire to go to war with me. So we're going to grab, grab a trader there. We're also going to, with this little bit of gold that we saved up, we're going to purchase a builder and hopefully get some tile improvements to speed up craftsmanship. I'm going to probably just put farms and a mine maybe. We'll kind of have to play that by ear. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to put a mine there. Right. Just grab riding at this point. I'm not really trying to illustrate much other than the strategy is basically complete at this point. We're very, very close to getting a religion. Three... Uh, some religions have already gone. There's actually a small chance we don't get it this time because we got such a poor production start in our capital. Let's make sure. Can we speed this up by a turn? It would be really nice if we did get a religion. The way they changed how this displays, um, I think this is a civilization who's already earned a great profit, so I don't think they can get another one. We should get ours next turn, maybe? And there it is. So it is turn 48. We have two cities, but we have secured a religion. So what is the follow-up strategy to this? Now that we have our religion, we can recruit our great prophet. Our follow-up strategy is to go for uh, state workforce. In fact, I can switch away from craftsmanship because I'm about to get the boost. Uh, to go for state workforce, build a government plaza, get to political philosophy, build a ancestral hall, I think it is. I can't remember. I always confuse these off the top of my head. It is the one that gives you production towards settlers. Yeah, ancestral hall. Um, you build the Ancestral Hall, um, and with your faith, you buy, you build a couple of missionaries and try to spread your religion to like a few nearby cities to get extra error score when you take the um, Exodus of the Evangelists uh, um, dedication here. You use that to get a Golden Age, and then when you're in the Medieval Era, the follow-up strategy is to use all your faith... Um, to start purchasing a whole bunch of settlers, building a whole bunch of settlers, and then fill in all this land really quickly before the AI snatches it up. You're, this is a very, very reliable strategy to get a religion. You sacrifice a lot, though. If I had just gone for settlers, I could easily have a, two more cities out already, but I wouldn't have secured myself a religion. So if a religion is really, really core to your game, and you really should be making very careful considerations about whether or not that's true, you can get one on Deity. But it's going to cost you, and you better make it work for you. This is the basic strategy. Um, I will be doing a follow-up video where I talk a little bit more about the theory of the... Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to combine it together into one single video. Now that I've recorded this part, um, I might even put it at the front of this. So a lot of what I said here might not make sense. Um, so... Yeah, this is going to be one... Yeah, yeah, I've made the decision right now. I'm, I'm going to make this into one, like, super video where I talk about the theory and the um, sort of structure of the build order. And, uh, yeah, this strategy works for me in almost every game start because it's the one that I use all the time in my, cult, in my culture games. I almost always go for a, a religion in my culture games. I almost always go for a... Um, religion in most of my games and this is the strategy that i use every time and it works like 99.9 percent .9 of the time however some of the time you are going to get beaten to a religion you're not going to get a religion and you might just get killed um at any point here france could have been like hey you know what england doesn't have an army and just waltzed over like four warriors and completely obliterated me um that's why you want to have units in a position to spot these things and then the second this is really, really important. The second you see more than a single warrior approaching your cities, you need to start building military. No matter what you're doing, if your goal is to survive, you need to start building military the second you see more than one warrior moving towards you. Uh, and usually it's going to be a slinger or a warrior that you're producing or an archer if you have that unlocked like I have. 
But yeah, that's it. That's it. We have secured a religion. That's all that matters. Now, what is a good religion is a topic for another day. Choral music, really, really powerful. I think I've already kind of done a video on religions. I might have to do another video following up talking about, okay, now that you've got yourself a religion, what's a good religion? And uh, sort of do a tier list based on the religious beliefs. But yeah, there you go. This, this is it. This is how you do it. And this is a very, very reliable strategy. Um, there's probably some very small um, situational things that uh, you, you might run into that are going to block this strategy. Uh, if you run into a problem, leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer all of the comments. Like if you tried the strategy and it doesn't go well for you, let me know what went wrong. And I'll try to give you advice on how to overcome that in future. Um, but that's it from me. I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time.